I finally finished the Skypea arc of One Piece, which is volumes 24 through 32, even though volume 32 says Water 7. It, uh, it has the end of Skypea. Th it doesn't tell you that. The 31, volume 31 just ends, and I was confused because I'm in the middle of a climactic battle, and the next arc says Water 7, I was like, oh, I'm missing a volume. Nope, just... Half of that volume is the ending of Skypea. I wish they would have labeled it a little bit. I don't know how they would have labeled it. I mean, I'm sure they did the best they could, but still very confusing for someone like me. But first, I wholeheartedly appreciate all the comments, the likes. I mean, you guys got this video to more views than I've ever seen ever on my channel. I Thank you sincerely thank you I really enjoy going through One Piece I enjoy doing manga and anime videos and to see a video like that really get a lot of attention and really good conversations in the comments it's just it, it was awesome so thank you so much alright I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop being sentimental cause we're here for the Sky PR I get it I get it Fat, we're, we're, we're going right now one piece of Skype here. Let's talk about it. Alright, so just so I'm warning everybody, uh, I'm just going to talk about it. I'm just going to talk about Skype here. There will probably be spoilers, I guarantee you. Um, but here are my general thoughts of One Piece of the Skype arc. If, if you just kind of want to hear what I think about it, and then you can go read it for yourself. I think it's one of the deeper stories of the three arcs that I've seen. Um, he really tries to paint a villain and it's about two factions going at war with each other and maybe there's some manipulation. Does absolute power corrupt? Absolutely. Type of thing. And if you just blindly follow, if you give someone too much... you there's, Stories like that have been done before. I was surprised to see it in a One Piece, in the One Piece manga because it just seems like such a, a kid manga but he he really tries to paint this villain the thing i didn't like about it was he does push our crew as side characters in my opinion for this arc but overall i think he wraps it back around from volume 24 to volume 32 i think he wraps it around and you actually understand the story he was trying to tell with the characters in the world that he has built for his story. But yeah, that's like my quick summary. If you're like, I don't want to watch this whole video, I completely understand. Thank you for even giving it an opportunity. I appreciate it. But now let's really talk about Skypea. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to level with you 100%. I didn't love this arc when it was started. Um, you know, well, like the Nico Robin introduction... And I think, like, the, the Blackbeard people were chasing him. And there was, like, a... Like, there was just this meeting of the seven warlords. And, like, you meet somebody named, like, Flamingo. And there's, like, this meeting talking about who's going to replace Sir Crocodile. Like, that was cool. But it's, like, just bits and... You can tell that he's, like... Here's some... There's some breadcrumbs for you. What is... There's little breadcrumbs for you. Like, you see that he's planting all this stuff for maybe, like, the Water 7 arc, which is next, or beyond. But then the actual arc is they basically hear about this El Dorado, the City of Gold. And they figure out that it's, that it's in the sky, and they get launched up into the sky, and they, and they stumble on this 400-year-old war uh, between these two factions of people. And they meet Inu. Again, I'm very bad with names. It, that's how I'm going to pronounce it. I apologize if it's wrong. We're just going to keep... It's just, just keep going. <laughs> but they meet Inu and, and the Sky Knight and Wiper. And these factions and these people that are, are basically having this civil war. Which is awesome. It's a great... You can tell Oda... When he went up into the sky, he was like, 
even the rules that I've built for this One Piece world doesn't apply here. Like, he tried... There's an octopus balloon thing when the ship's coming back down. And it's, I mean, he's just so creative. That man, I think he was maybe in his mid-20s when he was writing this. He is incredibly creative. Incredibly creative. So he even puts out he he even puts out all his weird rules for his for his world, and when they go into the sky, it's 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 crazy things happen. But the main characters, in my opinion, because I I come to One Piece for Luffy and the crew, and especially like Nico Robin, finally joined the crew. Well, she kind of was just like I'm joining this crew whether you like it or not. But but they get the new crew member. And then they're all pushed aside and separated. Like, I understand that maybe you want to set up other arcs that are coming, so you're just going to put them on this grand adventure as pirates. Very cool. Like, kind of like a El Dorado. We've seen stories like that before. Put your own spin on it. I totally get it. That's great. I come, and I'm thinking most people come, for Luffy and the crew. Together. Their interactions together. When they are, like, having an adventure. Don't separate everybody. Sanji? Sanji's my boy. Like, I I like Sanji. He kicks stuff. Dude kicks a guy, explodes, uh, asleep. Asleep for, like, <laughs> five volumes. You see him when they get there, and he shows up at the end. Like, clutch. Very clutch at the end. But that's it for him and Usopp. Legitimately, they asleep. Most of the arc. Luffy is in a snake for... 20 chapters. You know, and I totally get why he is because the main villain is electricity. Spoilers, Luffy is rubber. Rubber conducts electricity. I will say, though, I was like, oh, this is going to be a boring fight. Like, he's just, boom, done. He made it interesting, and they adapted, and they actually made it a very good fight. So, it was a very good fight. But yeah, I come for the crew and their camaraderie with their adventures, and I just really didn't like that they... They split up everybody, and to be honest with you, this story is about those two groups of people that are having this civil war. That's what this story is about. All eight chat, eight volumes, all eight volumes are about those people, and that's fine. That's great. I don't come for One Piece for a story that's not about the crew. And, and that's the thing that in the beginning really rubbed me the wrong way. And I was like, oh, oh, they're going to hate me. <laughs> like, I'm not going to like this. And then they're going to be like, oh, that guy, that guy sucks. Like, I just have to be honest with you. And it's my journey through One Piece that I'm kind of documenting here for everybody. In all actuality, in... In the beginning of this arc, I didn't like it. In the middle of this arc, I didn't like it. At the end of this arc, though, it came around, and I understood what he was trying to do, and I respected him for it. Now, am I going to sit here and tell you that this is my favorite arc of the three that I've read so far? Absolutely not. It is at the bottom. Not by much. I'm not saying it's, it's bad. It's better than... Some arcs in Bleach. Most arcs in... But maybe all of Bleach. No. <laughs> but no, I'd be lying if I said that. I. It is my third of the three arcs that I've read. Doesn't mean that it's not good and it doesn't have its own merits. I, I think what he was trying to do with the villain and the, and the world and the stuff that he was trying to set up was fantastic and he nailed it. It's just not what I came to One Piece for. I came for the crew. And I will tell you this. I do think that this is going to be one of those arcs. And, and some people have said in the comments of, of the other video. Where on the second read through. The reread. I'm going to catch a lot of things. That I guarantee you. I did not catch on this read. And it will probably make me like it more. But. Through a first read through, I just feel like this arc was not what I personally come to One Piece for. Um, but 
when you start to actually learn about the history of this island and the people that inhabited it, it's actually touching. Like, those guys were best friends. Like, when he's running to the boat and saying, you're welcome here, when they realize that the trees, that they were cutting them down to actually save them, it's right here. It's right here at the heart. It just wasn't what I was expecting. Not a bad thing. I enjoyed it. At the end, I, I it, when he all tied it together, I said A+. Plus. I just, my biggest complaint is I wish he wouldn't have separated the crew. But I'll tell you, this, this art just feels like, and I know, like, the Seven Warlords, I've heard that before. I know that's important. But most of this arc feels like, all right, let's come up with, you know, 50, 60 chapters and tell the story, leave breadcrumbs to what we're doing, but it just seems like a setup arc for what's coming. I feel like when I know more about this series and get deeper into the series, I'm going to come back to this arc and appreciate it for what it actually was doing. Through a first read-through, it just felt like he pushed the main characters to the side and told a story uh, of an island, which is not a bad thing. It's just not what I come to One Piece for. But I, honestly, don't hate me. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to give you my opinion. Um, if You know what? If you really enjoyed this art, tell me in the comments why. And I'm not, I, I think there are going to be valid reasons. That wasn't like a challenge. I wasn't like, why? Yo, no. Just tell me what I was, what I was missing. And, and do you agree with me that on a reread of this arc later on when I know more about the series, will I actually find more meaning in this arc? I believe I will, but I'm not 100% sure. I just feel like I rambled in this video and repeated the same things over and over again. But it's just, it's so hard for me to put into words what I really think about this arc. Because I don't want to hate on something that I know people find meaning in. And people enjoy. And I did enjoy it. I mean, you gotta think about it. I read it in probably two weeks. You know, eight or nine volumes or whatnot. 50, 60 something chapters in two weeks is very good for me. But yeah. Once again, thank you for supporting the first video. Hopefully you enjoyed this video just as much as the last one. And you kind of understood where I was coming from. And you know what? If this is your favorite arc of the three that I've read so far, East Blue, Baroque's Works, and Skypea, let's talk about it in the comments. And, and like, maybe you'll tell me something. It'll click in my head that I've overlooked, which is completely possible. And I'll be like, oh my god, this has unlocked everything. This is the key. This arc is now my favorite. I didn't hate this arc. Please, I did not hate this arc. It just, like I said, it just wasn't what I was expecting. But it makes me very excited for Water <laughs> Yes, thank you for watching this video all the way through. Um, hopefully, you enjoyed it. And let's talk about One Piece in the comments. And again, thank you for supporting the channel and supporting the videos. I cannot wait to journey through all of One Piece. I am so excited. So yeah, hopefully you'll uh, still consider me part of the crew. And uh, now on to Water 7. See you next time.